Hey you guys, what's up? It's Noelle, Baker's Backyard Bounty. I'm so glad that you are here with us today. It's been a minute since I've made a video back here, but I just wanted to touch base with you guys, show you some new things that are developing around here, and to also remind you about um, the Baker's Backyard Bounty Seed Swap, which uh, registration ends tomorrow tomorrow's friday uh so if you will let me know if you want to join in just send me an email i will post all of the details like my email address instructions all that in the description below um, but tomorrow is the deadline for registration and then i'm going to be sending out the packets of seeds next Friday. So I need your seeds within this next week to arrive um, at my address, which if you decide to join the swap, I'll give you more details about where to send them and yada yada. So anyways, seed swap, they're super fun. It's a great way to connect with fellow gardeners, um, a great way to share your channel or your uh, social media accounts, and overall just a bomb way to get some new seeds and uh, share some fun varieties. So I hope that you will join us lesson for me learned is there's just some things you cannot control this has been like an epically wet year and um no matter how much i might uh, will the vegetables to grow that's the beauty of gardening it's just some things are out of your control not all things but some things so that's something that i need to um pay attention to a little bit more but come on and i'll show you what's what's happening around here so one of the things I was struggling with the most was the fact that my squash and my melons in this half of the raised garden bed were not taking off. Like I had planted these melon transplants, it feels like a <laughs> month ago, and they just stayed pretty small. However, with all of this sunshine the past day and a half, they're beginning to um, really take off and that is hopeful as well as these squash plants. A lot of this growth has come, it really seems like in the past Mm, even like three or four days. So I am hopeful. What I've done with the squash is, um, Reed honestly does not love growing squash. Historically, our squash has always succumbed to squash vine borers and powdery mildew. And you can stay on top of it and kind of prolong the life of your squash, but it's a lot of effort, a lot of work, and we're just not really willing to do that. We love squash, but like, we don't like love squash to do that. So what I've done is actually done some succession sowing, meaning that I've put in some extra seeds. Um, like every week I've been putting in seeds. And so hopefully when some of these plants succumb to squash vine borers and powdery mildew, then others will be cropping up. That will stay healthy for a period of time. And then when they succumb, <laughs> I'll have a, another wave. I really haven't done a lot of succession sowing historically in my gardening history, um, but Roots and Refuge Farm, Jessica Sowers, this is what she does, and she said that she harvests quite a bit of squash, so we're giving it a try this year um, because I do have some fun varieties that I haven't tried yet, and I really do want to get a harvest of squash because it's so versatile um, to cook with. So that's my squash story. Here I have our raised bed that includes beans, tomatoes, and some basil. The tomatoes have decided that they want to like show off a little bit, so they've had a huge growth spurt uh, the past week. These that I included here are all varieties that I really wanted to grow this year. In Tomato Alley, uh, across the side of our uh, garden space, those were just extra plants that I had that um, I didn't even have them labeled, but that I just threw in the ground just to see what happened and they've actually all taken off. But these were varieties that I really did want to grow and actually they've been a little bit slow to mature. However, now they're all setting fruit, so that's encouraging. These are, what I have in here is Lucid Gem, some Canner Hole, Paul Robeson tomatoes, red and green zebra. I'm trying to think, there's one more variety. Paul Robeson, Canner Hole. <laughs> I'll let you know if I think of it, but I have um, six plants total in here. Oh, and a triple crop, that's what it is. Um, and so far they are beginning to thrive. Now I know there's not like one uh, 
rule that fits for all gardens on when to harvest tomatoes but historically we've allowed tomatoes to ripen on the vine which has been great for us like we haven't had a ton of loss with that but we did have some loss to like pets or splitting especially with all this rain um, or birds so what we're trying this year is to harvest the tomatoes whenever the bottom so the blossom end begins to blush meaning it turns color and I will say that when they ripen on the counter that way, we have been able to eat them. They taste great and they aren't at risk for um, being, I don't know, taken by <laughs> a bird or pest. So it's been a great way that we have um, just adapted this gardening season and so far it's been working for us. Now I know some people will say, well, the tomato doesn't taste the same. We can't really tell a difference quite yet, um, but we haven't gotten a ton of our big slicer tomatoes yet. They've been kind of like smaller um, tomatoes that we've harvested that way. So we shall see. Maybe I'll do a little side-by-side -side taste test um, and let you guys know. This tomato plant that I actually duct taped in the previous video, I have the story of that. My beloved rabbit actually just like bit it in half and I duct taped it. It's had a growth spurt and look, it has so many new flowers on it. So duct tape is amazing. I would do an ad for them for sure. Now walk with me down Tomato Alley <laughs> and I want to show you guys this one. I really got to figure out a different trellising system. This is my blue boarberry from Wild Boar Farms. Let me get out of the shadow. Okay, just look at how much fruit is on this bad boy. Can you guys see this? It is covered in little blue tomatoes like insane so I have it propped up on a t-post but yeah this whole garden twine situation I got to figure something else out because this bad boy is heavy we've been harvesting some so see like these are green on the bottom they're not quite ready but these here that are golden on the bottom I've been eating those and they are delicioso again wild boar farms is where I got this variety and Highly recommend, pretty prolific. Pollinator garden doing well as always. We have gotten more bees. I don't know if you can see this bumblebee right here. We've gotten more bees lately, which has made me happy. I mean, more meaning like I've seen maybe 10 bees, um, which I'm fine with. I'm just happy that they're here. I wanna be a, a sanctuary for them. My blackberries, we've been harvesting some blackberries, not a ton. But I think later in the summer is when those really take off. This is their first year and they taste really good. They're tart when they first begin to ripen. Like you can see right there, it's kind of in the shadow. See like there's some black on there, some red. So that one will take a little while, but when they're like dark, dark black and slightly squishy, that's when I like them. They're really sweet. This plant has been producing some Again, it hasn't taken off like crazy, but I'll be patient. So coming from the herb garden where I planted more chamomile, some rosemary, and I actually have some ground cherries growing over there. Hallelujah. Roly polies haven't gotten that one yet. My loofa gourd flowered today. So that's exciting. I hope the flowers get pollinated. It is really, you guys see how much this plant has sprawled. It just keeps going and going. So I keep trying to loop it back on itself so it doesn't overwhelm everything. Right here, I planted some passion vine. It hasn't opened yet, but it has tons of flowers just in waiting. And that flower is just, it looks like something from outer space. I can't wait to show you guys. I got a purple passion vine. So if you want to Google it, look it up. It is a really groovy plant. So I've noticed like when I get discouraged with things get overrun with pests, roly polies eat my seedlings, things just aren't growing, like the soil isn't ready. Um, Cause a lot of these beds we've just put in this year. So to be honest, like a lot of our growing space is pretty fresh still. And we're really pushing it by trying to plant so much food um, so soon. 
especially with like the no-till method that takes some time to really develop the nutrients but um when i get discouraged i try to focus on what is growing because it's easy to focus on what's going wrong but there's actually a lot going right and then sometimes i'll even go to the plant nursery and buy me a plant pop it in the ground and that feels a little bit like success or just like some momentum to keep me going um because yeah it feels really good to successfully grow some things but the garden is also teaching me that it's okay to try and fail. Um, that's part of the process. You can make a garden oasis, but your kids will always win out. <laughs> There's Lily's hot tub. Um, I ran into the house real quick, but on my way out, I want to show you guys our roses are starting to take off this climbing rose. I got this pretty arched. It reminds me of like a cathedral. I just got that at Lowe's. But yeah, this bad boy is finally really getting established and looking healthy. Had to treat it for some fungus. As we come over here, sorry, I don't want to make y'all sick. My potato slips, sweet potato slips in the grow bags. Those are obviously doing really well. Planted some sage and more rosemary and dill in that corner. It's pretty warm for dill to be honest, but I really want to make some good pickles this year. So I'm giving it a shot. Let's go into the garden now. I'll show you what's happening. So I've been waiting for these. Uh, this is my second year to try and grow them and they're finally starting to erupt. I swear it grows like every 30 minutes. This is crazy. These are cucamelons, Mexican sour gherkins, um, which will be just a fun little snack for us to try this year. They are more of a sour, like baby little melon looking thing, uh, but they are cucumber. So Mexican sour gherkins coming in strong. So like I've mentioned in previous videos, this uh, no-till bed, we just put in a couple of months ago. So this was like grass, this was lawn, but we wanted more growing space. So the cardboard, the topsoil, the compost, the wood chips, all that has been put in, as well as some rabbit manure and uh, organic fertilizer. However, the beans just looked like pretty pale. They weren't growing very well. Now there were my cucumbers. So I went ahead and moved those down to more established parts of the garden, which is like from that uh, Scarlet Runner bean back is the more established part, uh, just to see if they would do better. And so far they've, they went through a little bit of shock, but they, they're starting to perk up and I'll show you guys. I haven't given you guys a big update on our peppers, but look at these rooster spur pepper plants. They are covered. We have four of them and they're all covered in these peppers. They spicy. Over here we have, um, what are these? Tolis sweet peppers. I think that's what these are. We're waiting for them to turn red before pulling them off. But yeah, they also are loving this weather. As you can see, it almost looks hilarious like how big these are for these small of plants. But they're doing really well. This is our first year to grow all three of these varieties of peppers. And then next to that we have, this is a squash pepper, and we have two of these going, but this is Ralph Thompson's squash pepper. So I think the rooster spur, you can make um, chili powder in, out of that, and maybe these are paprika. I can't quite remember, but Reed got these varieties in order for us to dehydrate them and make spices. I also have some jalapenos that I planted quite a bit later that are starting to grow. And this is our okra patch, which actually is starting, we have like 15 okra plants, so we'll have a lot of okra, but actually it's starting to bud and form, um, hopefully what will be okra flowers soon. They're so gorgeous, okra flowers. And then the sweet potatoes have become established and are starting to, I know this is shady over here um, in late afternoon, but the sweet potatoes are growing and looking pretty healthy. And on our way out, I'll just show you, this is a yellow variety of onion. These have by far been our biggest um, onions to form. I've done some red onions, some white onions that were short day varieties. So these are taking a little bit longer. I don't think this is a short day variety. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't remember what variety it actually was, but it's a yellow onion from Dixondale Farms. Um, but these are bulbing really well and they just haven't flopped over yet. So we're letting them be.
And finally, check out this tomatillo. I actually added in some support. Uh, this one was planted a little bit um, after, so it's, it's just now starting to flower and really get established. But this one is getting large um, and in charge. So I'm eager to see if it actually sets some fruit this year. It's our first time growing tomatillos, and this is a purple demilpa variety. So this is pretty funny. I was out there for like 10 minutes and the iPhone is like, I'm too hot, will not function. So I had to bring it in and put that phone in front of the fan while I watched some Homestead Rescue on Discovery Channel. It is such a good show. It's kind of hilarious. It's a bunch of people, which I would probably fall into this camp if I had a homestead in the boonies, who knows? But they're like, we bought 12 acres with our life savings. The groundwater is poisoned and we have to drive three hours for water and the soil won't grow anything because it has arsenic in it. Oh, and there's coyotes and a bear that threatens us every night. Like, help us. <laughs> and this crazy family, the Rainies, they like go in and they just like totally come up with these super creative solutions. And I love watching it from the comfort of my suburban home <laughs> and judging people that buy arsenic land. So while we're inside waiting for the phone to acclimate, to um, the Texas summer. I was gonna show you guys some things that are inside the house uh, from the garden. So my windowsill is covered in tomatoes and that's a fun feeling. So like if you don't know what blushing is because you're new to gardening, totally fine, I didn't know what it was. So this is like a green tomato that started to blush, meaning this blossom end, the bottom end of the tomato is turning color. And so that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying we're bringing them in so that they have a higher chance of survival uh, in making it into our bellies. Um, and so we are just ripen that on, it doesn't have to be the windowsill, but the countertop. Uh, this I believe is a prudent purple tomato. It's like actually a really sweet uh, pink color. And these have tasted pretty yummy. We've gotten quite a few of those. These are all zebras. So this is from Tomato Alley and this is from the raised bed. But look at that variegation on there. I love these zebra tomatoes. They're just so pretty and they've tasted really, really good. So you can see how it's starting to ripen from orange to red. Um, I've also been collecting calendula and drying it out. I tried some of the dehydrator. You just have to do it at a really, really low temp. Um, for quite a while, but I have some that's pretty crispy here. I'm gonna put this in oil and try and make some skin products with it. Um, I've actually never grown calendula, but I hear that's the thing to do. One thing that has really pushed us is trying to use what we've planted in the garden um, in the kitchen. And that's pushed us to like kind of step out of that traditional like American boxed in diet of like uh, trying things like medicinally, drinking teas out of the garden, um, and that's been really good for us. Like constantly learning about new ways to use what we have out in the garden. So I'll show you something that I made real quick. So one thing that I have in the herb garden is lemon balm, and we have a ton of it. And it's supposed to be good for anxiety. Hala for a dollar if you need anything you can get to help with anxiety. Um, so I cooked down, I don't know, maybe like three cups of lemon balm leaves. Again, this is from Roots and Refuge. I think it was like a year ago she made this video about honey medicine. But I cooked down lemon balm leaves and then strained that water out and added two parts of lemon balm water to one part honey. And we're going to add this into our peppermint tea that we drink at night, which is also from the garden. So these are things that, you know, like when Reed and I first started dating or were married, we didn't really drink tea at night together, but it's turned into a beautiful ritual. And actually Lily has started drinking tea with us. And that's just something really sweet. She has her own teacup. Um, I have it here. This is Lily's teacup. She's pretty swanky. She's a real British girl. So um, yeah, just new memories are being made, new traditions, and I have the garden to thank for that. Last thing I wanted to show you is we're growing a ton of lavender. I've been drying this out in my dehydrator um, to use for culinary things, like I wanna make some shortbread lavender cookies, and then also making bath salts, which are really great gifts. Um, we have zinnias out the yin yang, so I just pop those in here. Dahlia's out the yin yang as well, we can't harvest those fast enough. And then these are bachelor buttons, they're this beautiful blue, and I cannot pick enough of them. Like two plants, we have two bachelor button plants, and it's like every day we're pulling some off um, because it's just like dripping in 
in flowers. I'll show you guys in a second when the phone is rebooted. But uh, I've been drying those out, the bachelor buttons, with pansies and rose petals in my dehydrator and making a, a mixture of dried edible flowers to throw on like cookies with some um, sugar on top or to, I don't know, like put on cakes. That's what I envision using it for, putting it on a pretty like vanilla cake. Um, and then also I have made for gifts and then myself some sugar scrub with essential oils, jojoba oil, sugar and then my flour mixture and that's been really lovely to use in the shower so if you choose to garden you will constantly be surrounded by beauty and learning new skills and adapting your lifestyle to incorporate what you're learning and what you're growing in the garden it's so bomb it's the best i don't really recall where we left off so we'll just sally forth and go look at some pretty flowers okay like two days ago, I picked about four dahlias out of the garden. So there's some in the background, some here. And I've already pulled about three or four flowers off of this one plant. As you can see, it's just exploding with blooms. Um, this is a 90 Days of Dahlia mix I got from Eden Brothers. And they've been super easy to grow. This is our first year. Oh, look at that beautiful butterfly slash moth. I'm not quite sure. But um, yeah, dahlias, it's the way to go. Let me take you guys back here. I had a bunch of hollyhocks growing and it really made this garden look lush, but I actually see how many blooms there are. I took the hollyhocks out and moved them to the cottage garden because they were starting to take over and I really wanted to plant some more zinnias, sunflowers, um, things that I still had time to grow. These snapdragons have been coming in beautifully. They've been yellow and white. So as you can see, I now have quite a bit of open space that actually I have covered in seeds. Don't worry, things will be growing. I have some coneflower, cosmos, polar bear, zinnias, um, dill, just a whole smattering of things in here that soon I hope to show you as it starts to take off. This coxcomb is insane. We really love growing that. Look, it has a bunch of little ones coming off the side. It's also called, uh, I think, Celosia. So I wanna plant more of that next year for sure. Okay, this is what I was talking about with the bachelor buttons. Y'all, like I picked these two days ago. There were no flowers on this plant and they just keep exploding, which I am not complaining about. But look at that brilliant blue color. So gorgeous. If you wanna do a cut flower garden, I highly suggest doing bachelor buttons. Some of our sunflowers are beginning to fade, like this one, and some are just starting to show their glory, but I've definitely been succession sowing the sunflowers just so that we have them even through the fall because they just make me so happy. Not the most beautiful <laughs> section of our yard quite yet, um, but I wanted to show you guys this is another variety that came with that dahlia mix and it's just covered in dahlias like I'm just so impressed and these really turn into beautiful puffy kind of teddy bear like flowers that are great in arrangements they last a really long time so thank you Eden Brothers the last thing I want to show you guys over here there are about 15 tomato plants these are from cherry tomatoes from the store that throughout the fall and winter we've just thrown back here to the chickens and as the seeds have dropped or they've rotted they've cropped up into another tomato alley so I think I'll be set on cherry tomatoes they're starting to fruit okay I lied to you that wasn't the last thing I wanted to show you <laughs> The last, last things I wanted to show you were the items on my porch. So this is elephant garlic that we've had out here to cure. And you can leave the green on. I actually think it's preferable to leave the green tops on, but some of mine actually molded just because it was so humid. And uh, anyways, I have it on a screen now. But look at how huge this garlic is. Like this is one clove of elephant garlic. And this is what this whole bulb started out as. I had eight cloves from Haas Tools, put it in the ground, and one of these turned into a bunch of these. Um, elephant garlic, I cooked with it for the first time last night, 
and after washing my hands like three or four times, I went to bed with the smell of garlic on my hands and it tasted amazing. So if you live here in the South, I highly suggest growing elephant garlic. It is so easy and um, I mean, can be used for tons of things in terms of culinary uses. And then I'm gonna be hanging this bad boy up. I got a tall shepherd hook from Lowe's yesterday. So I gotta figure out where I wanna place it in the garden. But my friend from actually high school, we were in ceramics together, makes these beautiful, I have some bird seed in it, bird feeders um, made out of clay. This one has a beautiful fern design. But her account is South Austin Ceramics on Instagram. So if you guys want a gorgeous bird feeder, um, she has like mugs and pie plates and all kinds of beautiful things, but South Austin Ceramics, thank you for this gorgeous bird feeder. We can't wait to, they are just so chatty today. We can't wait to use it. <laughs> thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to sign up for the seed swap. May you find the bounty in your own life and all the beauty that it holds, and we'll see you soon.